In this step, we're going to go over how to manage IIS application pools with PowerShell. So to do that, the first thing we have to do here is connect to my remote server. So I'm running locally here. Uh, I'm not running on the, the server console itself. So I'm going to use PowerShell remoting to connect to this remote server. Be sure to check out some snips on PowerShell remoting in the tech snips library. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I will assign my computer name here. In this case, it's not part of a domain. I'm running it across the internet actually to an Azure virtual machine. So I'll just put in my IP address of my Azure virtual machine here. I've already provided my credential here. So I would just start up a PowerShell remoting session. So you notice here that I now have a PowerShell remoting session set up. So now I'm on my web server and I have IIS installed on it as well. So because we're going to be using some commandlets, those commandlets are part of the web administration module. So first of all, we'll, we'll go ahead and import the web administration module. Now that's import, we have lots of different commands available to us. First off, let's see how we can discover and get application pools. So the first thing we do here, we can just see with git command what all the different app pool commands that we have available. So notice that we have Quite a few there, not a whole lot, not, not that there's uh, a much as a lot of other objects, but we can get the job done. You'll, you can still see that during this, we'll use a combination of these commandlets and also the IIS PowerShell drive. So whenever you import the web administration module, it creates an IIS PowerShell drive, which provides access to the app pools, sites, applications, a lot of different objects in IIS. So you'll see that we'll go back and forth here. All right, so the first way we can find out what app pools are available on our machine is using the IIS PowerShell drive. And to do that, we simply use the common get child item command. And then now you can see that we have a few different app pools already on here. So we can also use the get item property command. At this point, we can just drill down and see more information just on a particular app pool if we would like. The other way we can use is get IIS app pool. So we're not using the PowerShell drive at this point. We are actually just using the commandlet, which it gets the information behind the scenes in the same manner. But you can see that it's very similar to just using the PowerShell drive. It's just two different ways to get the same information. So what if we would like to find the application pool associated with a particular website? Now to do this, we can use the get website command. The get website command is part of the web administration module and the get website command returns an object of application pool for every website. So notice that we can see that our default website is set up to automate boarding stuff application pool. So that's a good way we can find the application pool associated with the website. Next up, we can drill down a little bit farther and find attributes. So there's a lot of different attributes associated with app pools. We can use that by just using get item, then specifying the IIS drive path to the particular app pool that we want, and then reference the process model property here. So there's a lot of different ones in here, and these all can be changed and modified however you need. But you can also drill down attributes is another interesting one here that we can use that is a very common one that, that I use um, in my day job to change various things in IIS. But you can drill down on any of those properties um, as you wish. Next up is creating IIS app pools. So let's clear this screen here and we'll use the commandlet and the IIS drive before. I would like to create an app pool called automate boarding stuff. We can use this by using the new app pool commandlet and you can see that it's very simple, just creates it. So let's go ahead and now we want to create the same one again. And actually, let's just do, let's just call it automate the boring stuff too, just so we can show another one. And we can use the IIS drive using this, the common new item command. Exact same thing, just two different ways to do it. So no big deal there. Next up, we can set attributes. We can change the attributes in various, in all kinds of different ways. To do this, to get down to the attribute level, you'll typically want to use the IIS drive because it's a lot more flexible. To do that, we use the set item property command. We specify the path to the app pool. In this case, it's default app pool. And then we specify the property name, which is for process model here. 
And then we have the value of whatever you're going to do. In this case, I'm setting the username and password and identity type values here. So I will look and run this. Doesn't do much. And then we will check and see if that applied. And we can scroll down here and we can see that username is user underscore name and password is password and identity type is three. So uh, using the set item property is another good way to just change various attributes in IIS. Okay, next up is restarting app pools. This is very simple. Simply restart web app pool. That's all there is to restarting web app pools with the web administration modules uh, restart web app pool command. Next up is removing IIS app pools. Again, extremely easy. You just run remove web app pool. Since I created that one, I will go ahead and just remove this other one that we created here. Looks like it doesn't do that because I fat fingered it. There we go. All right. So there we go. That's all there is to removing app pools. So we can remove app pools. So, but you know how to manage app pools now. How do we bring this all together? This next up is a custom function that I had built a while back, and I wanted to show you an example of how all this that we're talking about can come together. So I created this function called new IIS app pool. That's essentially a wrapper around all this function that we had created. And I did this because we had some common scenarios that we had to go through and we were constantly repeating ourselves by typing in these commands all the time. So what we did do is we created a function called new IIS app pool. And this function has five parameters here, the name of the IIS app pool, the computer name, the web administration modules do not have a computer name parameter so we had to create one ourselves, which is essentially just a wrapper around the invoke command, which you'll see here, which we've been doing. The .NET version, we have .NET 4 and 2. We wanted to be able to specify those. Run as 32 if we wanted to have the app pool run as 32-bit or 64-bit. And then finally, the a PS credential object to allow us to authenticate with alternate credentials to the computer name. And then inside of this function here, this is where we have the logic. So you'll see that starting on line 82, we have the script block. So the script block is all of the code in this function. It's pretty much all in the script block. This is going to run on the remote computer with the invoke command PowerShell remoting command. So the first to explain this, we're not going to explain this in detail, but this essentially does exactly the same thing as what we just did. It's importing the web administration module to make those commandlets available. We are defining the app pool path on the, then on line 93. This is where we're checking. We have a little bit of logic and error handling here. We first check and see if the application pool exists. If it does, then we just say application pool already exists and we throw an error. If it doesn't, then we go down through here and we create a new application pool. Notice that I'm using new item here instead of the new IIS app pool. Same thing. Then we set the application pool to use the specified .NET runtime version. So a as before in the parameter, we are able to provide v2 and v4. And then the if the run as 32-bit switch was set, we can set that as well. And then set some common default settings that we have for all of our web servers. So we have the idle, we set the idle timeout to zero. We turn on recycling, and we have a lot of events that we log um, on recycle. So uh, just a lot of common parameter. We can build our own function and put in our own functionality and set our own attributes this way and then that was all in the script block so that's just all in the single script block there and then after that it's pretty much it's pretty simple we just use the invoke command we provide the credential to the invoke command if we want to provide alternate commands and then we just run it and, and see what happens so let's see let's try this and see what happens here so let's go ahead and collapse the function here because it can be pretty big and now let's create one where no app pool exists. So I'm doing here on line 137. I'm just making sure I'm connecting to the remote computer here and making sure that it doesn't, um, the app pool doesn't exist. However, since I'm already in my PowerShell remoting session interactively here, I don't have to do that. Instead, I can just simply run remove web app pool and see if it actually removes it. So it does not exist. So it's not there. So that's good. So I can just run my new IIS app pool here after I bring it into my session and make it available. All right, so now we will run this. 
And then now you can see that it goes through some verbose messages and then it finally tells us the application pool automate boring stuff was created successfully. So at this point, it was created. It went through all of that code that we provided and we were able to call just new IIS app pool instead of going through all of that code that we created earlier. And they finally demonstrate, we can run this again when the app pool exists and notice that the IIS application pool automate boring stuff already exists. So that is our custom error handling. So that has been how to manage IIS application pools with PowerShell.